Welcome to another edition of Compelled. I am Joe Spiegel. Mike Sutherland. All right. This time we're going to be talking about Yelena Grigorieva. She is an activist, or was an activist, f- for LGBT issues in Russia. And recently she was found... Um, multi- she was killed and dumped in some bushes. From multiple stab wounds. I'm sorry. And yeah, th- her body was found in, in the bushes and she was also choked. A horrific death for someone who was trying to make a change in a, in a very oppressive society. So, go. What's it like to be listed on a website that targets gay people for death? What's it like to receive death threats because you're different in protest war? Gay rights and freedom for political prisoners. What's it like to be threatened for having an opinion? Well, that happens quite often, especially to something as small as games journalism to something as big as gay rights. You could have asked Elena Grigorieva uh, had she not been killed several days ago. According to Russia's investigative committee, which is a state body that handles major crimes, reported that a woman was found dead in some bushes with multiple knife wounds. She was killed and dumped in some bushes because she was different. Let that sink in for a minute. We live in a world where in some circles that's acceptable. It's not a problem having an opinion. There are millions of YouTube videos out there that are available and talk about how they hate certain movies or plot politics or laws or even countries because it doesn't fit their social view of their reality. You know what? That's acceptable. People can dislike things. People can hate things. Look at what has happened with Brie Larson, Captain Marvel, or Rose, the chick from The Last Jedi, or even The Last Jedi, or this whole movement on the idea that empowering women is garbage or that strong females are just another part of the feminist and Hollywood agenda that needs to go away. And that nonsense gets posted to all sorts of websites as content, in some cases as real news. But it's just an opinion and nothing more. Someone saying something that you either agree with or disagree with. It's become a thing that people seem to take it upon themselves to inflict real harm on people because they think and believe that that's what needs to be done. Now, it's a small portion of the audience that believes that, but it's a small portion of the audience that seems to have the biggest voices. Where are we going with this? Straight to fucking hell, that's where we're going. Yelena was killed because her name was on a website that borrowed an idea from the movie Saw. But the damage was already done. To say that the site was responsible for her death is dumb. To say that the site influenced people is more along the lines of what happened. Because it advocated for the death of activists in the LGBT plus community. What kind of message does that send to people like Yelena? This website collected personal information on, uh, on activists, like their names, photos and addresses, and published them online and called for people to hunt or kill them, literally targeting people for their beliefs or sexuality or for being different. The website was online just until about a week ago. Did you know that Russia decriminalized homosexuality in 1993, Joe? No, I didn't, because the way that they act uh, through news reports sounds like they're still like condemning it. At the beginning of 2019, Yelena was 41 when she decided to come out as bisexual. As soon as that happened, the threats began. Most of them were private. The last of them came three days before her death. She was attacked at the entrance to her home and was told that LGBT plus people had no right to live. I don't know how they got that information, but she was with other people. So, She has received threats on social media that had images of two daggers and homophobic language. It was reported to the police, but the police denied ever receiving that information. It's ineffective. The police seem to refuse to do anything at all. And that's according to Igor Kochetkov, who is also on the SAW list and works as the head of the Russian LGBTQ network. And he's also made some serious efforts to help people that are at risk that live in Chechnya, where this sort of thing happens on a regular basis. Activists always face certain dangers, he said. Murder is certainly exceptional, but the threats come almost daily. Authorities ignore the sites and social media groups that distribute those threats and lists. As of Thursday, Russian police said that they had detained a man for the fatal stabbing of Yelena near her home in St. Petersburg, but are not treating the murder as hate crime. When it was determined that it was a hate crime, Yelena was stabbed eight times by an assailant whom she knew following an argument. Police aren't releasing the name of the man that has been detained. When it comes to gay rights or alternative lifestyles, or the LGBT plus movement. It seems that this is a dividing line between people. But why? Why is it such a problem? Part of it is ego. Parents blame themselves for their kids being different. The idea of their kids liking something that isn't normally acceptable in society or their community or is defined by community standards. Part of it is the whole grandkids factor. Children are expected to grow up, get jobs, buy a house, have two and a half kids, three cars, and a house in the suburbs. 
holidays with the parents, and two weeks vacation out of the year. Boring, normal, safe. Part of it is because of religion. Most religions find homosexuality a sin. It's a 2,000-year-old document of people that wrote something to keep the lower classes in line with the ruling classes. Look at Rome, orgies, and decadence. Then religion happens, and all of a sudden, whatever they were doing that was considered against religious doctrine gets hidden away, gets taken out of society as being amoral and illegal. Elena was killed because of this kind of thinking. Elena was not given a chance to fulfill her dreams or destiny. The person that killed her has, had not even given it a thought. Was it a hate crime or a crime of passion? Something tells me that it was a bit of both. Now, before I get into the whole hate crime versus hate crime is just crime, when you target a group of people to eradicate them from the face of the earth for being gay, I think that defines hate crime to a T. You don't have to like what's happening in the world, but change is inevitable. That doesn't mean you have to change. That What that means is you have to accept it and that there isn't a goddamn thing you can do to stop it from happening. Yelena was trying to help people. She was trying to inform people, and she wasn't even one of the bigger advocates for change out there. But she was big enough to get her name on a site that wanted her dead. What kind of disgusting society allows for that? What kind of disgusting human being, piece of garbage, would put something like that up in public, advocating that people should be killed just because? It's sick. It's animalistic behavior, and it's something that keeps being allowed because, let's face it, even though Russia decriminalized homosexuality, it's not really decriminalized. Look at Chechnya and other provinces around there that try to mass murder gay people or mass murder people that are different cultures, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This kind of thought and behavior is not just relegated to Russia. The entire region is like that, and it's based off of strict religious beliefs. And when I say region, I mean Asia, the continent of Asia. Eastern India, Europe. India, Asia, um, China, Saudi Arabia, the, the Middle East, all of that. Every one of those places are just full of these types of people. It's disgusting. We live in an era that still relies on indoctrination, the dogmatic views of people that publicly want change but secretly conduct a war to counter change and keep the less fortunate, poor, and middle class people fighting each other and doing a lot of the dirty work for the ones in charge. It's sick. It's also evident that this is happening. Just watch the news. It doesn't matter what station and see what they are really reporting. Stay away from TV. Take a vacation for, from the news for a few weeks. Then read a paper. Look at the most popular corporate news sites on the Internet, and it's pathetic. We keep fighting with each other and killing people that are different because we're being told that different is bad, that opinions and independence is bad, that you should get in line with everybody else, get that job, think this way, have those kids, and go to school to get your degree so that you can work a job that you'll die at before you retire. Live to work, never see your kids, buy that house, buy a car every three to five years and stay in fucking debt. Save your money for a year to go on vacation. Buy useless shit to put into a house that you have to maintain and scrape by for 50 fucking years. Don't have an opinion on anything. Don't burn that bridge. Don't get rid of people in your life that hold you back. Don't do anything considered crazy. And definitely don't, don't, don't want more from life than what's considered acceptable. Just be. Elena didn't get that chance. Her life was cut short because someone thought it was the right thing to do to attack her out of a crime of passion, a crime of circumstance, or because her name was on that website. Her voice, her message is gone. So I have to ask you, does this bother you? It should because this is the norm. Segregating people is the norm. Infighting is the norm. The media telling us that this is a shame and it should never happen is all calculated with a smile on their fucking face. We're being herded like sheep or cattle to do the whims of our masters because we're being told this is how it is and how it should be. Don't color outside the lines. Don't pick your nose in public. And women need to be pretty and accept that and just shut up. Just shut up and conform to society. And that's all I have to say.